Hello and welcome to my channel on Ancient in Chinese Astrology. I am professional astrologer Zagata from the website 100%astrology.com and in this video I will uh, examine the topic of is astrology a science? Now this is quite a, a complex and multifaceted question that can be answered in I mean that can be examined in, in from various perspectives. Now let me say that the short answer is no, astrology is not a science. The long answer is yes, astrology is a science. So I will have to obviously elaborate in detail. Now uh, let's get started. Uh, first, uh, let let me show you. Uh, this uh, is a, a poster that I made for myself a few years ago. Uh, it's in Bulgarian, that's okay, you get to see the Cyrillic um, <laughs> alphabet, etc. the Bulgarian alphabet, but I will translate. Uh, th these are uh, some famous and historical uh, people that, uh, that practiced astrology or were professional astrologers. In other words, my idea here is to show you what great people were, were astrologers and what they achieved, and I mean who they worked for, etc. Uh, I will start with that. So the first one is Tr Trazilus, first century of, of the common era. Here he, here he is, uh, top left. He, he was a personal astrologer to the to the uh, Roman Emperor Tiberius. He was a, a, a gram, gram, grammarian. He was he edited the the written works of Plato and Dem Democrit, the, the the ancient philosophers. In, in fact, uh, because of him, we we got. Uh, 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 lots of works from Plato. He saved. He, uh, he saved them for us because of him. Next is Claudius, Ptole uh, Claudius Ptolemy, second century uh, of the Common Era. One of the most famous scientists in, uh, in history. He was an astronomer and astrologer, and he was the author of the most influential astrological book in history, the Tetra Biblos. Uh, next we have Mohammed Al Biruni, tenth century. Eminent court astrologer, astronomer, and encyclopedist, mathematician. So he had encyclopedic knowledge. He, uh, it, what's uh, valuable is that um, he uh, he also studied the Indian tradition, and in his book he also shares some uh, insights from that tradition as well. He was also into uh, into healing with with with, with crystals, etc. As I will explain later. Uh, next. Guido Bonatti, very famous Italian astrologer from the 13th century, eminent astrologer, author of the of the of the largest astrological book. I mean, I mean the biggest astrological book, like over a uh, thousand pages, book of astronomy, Liber Astronomy, Liber Astronomia in Latin. His skills to predict were uh, immortalized by Dante Alighieri in Dante's uh, Divine Comedy. He put uh, Bonatti in the eighth circle of hell because Bonatti was so skilled in predicting the future that uh, Dante uh, objected and said that only God uh, should know so much, uh, in a way. Uh, next is Johannes Müller, uh, known as Regio Montanus. Again, as astrologers, we know his uh, table of houses. I mean, his uh, the house system that, that we use. Um, he was astrologer, ast astronomer, mathematician. He also he was a uh, he taught at, at the University of uh, uh, Vienna, I believe, uh, uh, 15th century, and he uh, he cast the, the horoscope and delineated the horoscope of the future emperor Maximilian the first. This chart has survived, as I discussed in my video, a brief history of ancient astrology. Unfortunately, he died. He lived only 40 years and died. Uh, next is Nostradamus. He hardly needs any introduction. Uh, 16th century. Uh, the, the, the thing is that people know him as as a uh, as a prophet, but he was actually a physician and also an astrologer. And he was yes, he is an author of many prophecies. But he, for example, in uh, American astrologer Anthony Lewis, in his book on horror astrology, plain and simple, he uh, I believe he. Uh, he gives a chart that was delineated by Nostradamus, a horary uh, astrology chart about someone who had stolen something from the church. And Nostradamus uh, uh, read the chart and made the, uh, the prediction. Uh, next is Johannes Kepler, 17th century, 
very eminent astronomer, astrologer, mathematician. He discovered the three uh, laws of planetary movement. He was court astrologer, uh, and I mean emperor. Uh, he was court astrologer to the emperor, and he read the the chart of General Wallenstein. I have a detailed article about the horoscope of Wallenstein on on, on my uh, again on my website 100%astrology.com. If you if you write Wallenstein, yes, etc. Again, uh, modern scientists are, you know, it uh, it it grades them. It it's it, 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 it's it doesn't sit well with them uh, with them at all. That such I mean, that some of the most famous scientists and astronomers were actually astrologers as well. Again, uh, Ptolemy, Alberuni, uh, Kepler, now Brahe, Tycho Brahe also, 16th century, eminent astronomer uh, who originates from a noble uh, uh, noble house. He is known with uh, he is known for his uh, accurate and detailed astronomical uh, observations. He was court astrologer to the Roman emperor, and he was also an alchemist. Again, uh, very uh, he uh, he predicted for uh, also for I believe for the uh, for the Danish king or something. But anyhow, they were again they worked with with kings. They served kings and emperors, etc. Astrologers, I repeat. Next, uh, speaking of this uh, 16th, 17th century, also Nostradamus, there is this uh, uh, widely held belief that uh, uh, that uh, when uh, Nicholas Copernicus published his uh, his work, I will show you in the 16th century uh, the, about moving uh, about uh, heliocentric uh, astronomy. And because we practice geocentric astrology, that astrology kind of lost its its uh, its its footing, its uh, you know its its underpinnings, and that uh, uh, you know it, it's as if astrology was no longer relevant. Nothing could be further from the truth. That this is, is is this astrologer show I will show you. In other words, the all these astrologers later on after Copernicus. Let me show you about Copernicus. Uh, here he is. Uh, he published it in 1543 on the revolutions of the celestial spheres and he started the trigger uh, 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 copernican revolution etc etc again this is astrology is not a physical science it's uh, it's uh, it's phys it's not physical knowledge so uh, uh, again uh, all these astrologers they kept practicing the same the same type of knowledge that we are practicing today those of us that are staying true to the tradition and again, as you see, Brahe 16th century, Kepler 17th century, after uh, after uh, Copernicus, Galileo Galilei hardly needs any introduction again, 17th century encyclopedist considered as the father of modern physics, observational astronomy and of the scientific method. He was court astrologer to the royal family Medici. And I should also say that Caterina Medici herself was proficient in the art of astrology. In fact, here, uh, when I, when I uh, took the, the photo today of, 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 of this poster, there, there is this book, you can see the cover of, of the book The Fated Sky by Benson Bobrick. I always say this is the best book for the history of astrology. A tremendous scholar, he's an American uh, teacher at some university. He has uh, some other books, but this one is tremendous book. This guy should, he will, his name will remain in history. Uh, Next, uh, Giordano Bruno, 16th century of the uh, 16th century, a monk, a philosopher, astrologer, magician, mnemonics expert, mathematician, poet. He was burnt at the stake by the Inquisition. His statue is situated in the heart of uh, in, sorry in the heart of, of Rome, the capital of Italy. Uh, next, we have uh, Geoffrey Chaucer. 14th century he is considered to be the greatest english poet of the middle ages and for the father and the father of english literature he wrote a treatise for the construction of an astrolabe and he wrote this treatise for his son some of some of his works are uh, are, uh, are full of uh, astrological symbolism uh, last one i've picked here jean baptiste morin the most famous French astrologer of the 17th century. He was a court physician. He was professor of mathematics. He taught at the he taught at university, and he also developed a system for measuring uh, geographical uh, longitudes. Again, he wrote 26 books French astrology. Again, these are great great men. 
he was also present at the birth of the of Louis the Fourteenth, the Sun King, and predicted his uh, uh, his success, etc. So uh, again, well, I can I can add many many other names, like, such as for just for example, Newton comes to mind, uh, Goethe. Uh, that had astrological knowledge and many many others um, uh, okay so uh, let's move on to, uh, to to some other information that I did not that uh, I did not give in the in my initial article of, about brief history of ancient astrology the reason I'm I'm showing you this is to show you that all these people using this same knowledge for for, for, for over a thousand years again one could say that either all these people were wrong, either either all these people were fools, these geniuses, or something is uh, something is very very wrong with modern theory about science and what you know that astrology cannot be a science, that astrology cannot work, etc. etc. Uh, now uh, this is a very good article. I will, I will give the links in the description about uh, Saint Peter's Basilica. That it was actually. As this author says and quotes that it was actually built with astrology and as it starts when the holy father and, the, uh, and other leaders of the roman catholic church set, set down to plan construction of saint peter's basilica in rome the first person they reached out to was not michelangelo or any of the other architects they sought an astrologer i repeat an astrologer early 16th century and this again this is uh, th this this is proven by Mary Quinlan McGrath, a professor of art history at Northern Illinois University in the United States and author of, of this book, Influences Art, Optics and Astrology in the Italian Re Renaissance. And also what's interesting, he says here also that uh, uh, just a second. Uh, Uh, so the author says Pope Julius II and his Renaissance architects believed, quote, the concordance of the heavens and the radiation emanating from the cosmos provided protection for the building at the time of its founding and in turn the building would continue to radiate these powers upon the people associated with it over the centuries. Folks. In other words, uh, as per, uh, per my video yesterday about how uh, how astrology works, these people, again, uh, they uh, they uh, they are a proponents of, of the of the school that that the, the, the celestial bodies directly influence life. Not talking about physical influences; it's it's through some race or some unknown influence, but it's it's again plainly the architects and the pope, etc. Uh, so this is her book I showed you and let me show you uh, first let uh, a few words about St. Peter's Basilica just to, just one, te one sentence that it is considered the most renowned work of Renaissance architecture and the largest church in the world by interior measure folks friends let's repeat this the most renowned work of Renaissance architecture was created with astrology and it's the mo it's one of the holiest religious temples in the world folks and some fools say that religion is against astrology etc etc officially it is but look look what they did look what they did or oh, that science is against astrology you, you want more proof i will give you more proof you've come to the right you've come to the right place next First, uh, sorry. Let there is the chart. There is the chart of uh, in, with modern software. The chart of Saint, Bil Saint Basilica selection against per, per, again per, per this website and uh, uh, the work of this of this uh, female pro American professor, 18th of April, 1506 at 10 a.m. This is the chart. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna dwell on the chart because it's not the purpose of this video. But again, it has survived. Uh, next, we have uh, proof. Also, we have evidence that the Greenwich Observatory, can you believe it? Can you believe it, the irony? Astronomers, etc., criticizing astrology. Look, folks, look. We have proved that the Greenwich Observatory was built again with electional astrology. Here is the proof. Here is the chart. 
again there is the link this is the skyscript the traditional forum i'm also i'm a member of this forum uh it's an english forum very uh, very respectable and um uh, lots of lots of uh, very educa educated and even there are some scientists who uh, also uh, contribute here from time to time uh, the point is here is the chart and here is the here it is with uh, with modern software and also uh, 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 the author of fated sky benson bobrick he also uh, gives uh, i mean mentions this and he also mentions something else let me let me find it i, be, I believe it was page 241 in his book uh, so this is the chart and uh, the royal the royal the royal astronomer was sir uh, was Flamsted uh, John Flams Flamsted and he was a uh, uh, he did not like astrology. He was an astronomer, not an astrologer. By this time, there was separation between astronomy and astrology. And uh, nevertheless, he wanted to uh, to make sure that uh, he wanted to, you know, to uh, to have assurances that this whole project would not fall apart or that there would not be some uh, negative configurations or influences, if you will. And that's why he again they they used election astrology again this this there is proof uh also the author of uh, i can't find it now but uh it's in the uh, benson bobrick book that uh this same uh john flamstead he uh, uh when they found it when they when they laid the first uh, stone of the uh, of the royal greenwich hospital in 1696 he was also present and he had his instruments to calculate the planets and to check for configurations. Again, friends, the Royal Greenwich Hospital was created also. I mean, they were they were looking. They may not have used necessarily, but he was looking. He was checking after 21 years. He was checking. Again, this is in the book of, of Benson Bobrick. So, uh, uh, this, uh, this is the type of knowledge and the type of... Uh, of uh, of influence that astrology had and still has in fact and uh, speaking of this uh, uh, I would like to uh, to explain to you uh, this is part of an again it's uh, it's in Bulgarian it's in Cyrillic I will translate because again it's a uh, uh, it's a very easy reference uh, this is part of an article uh, sorry part of a lecture of a uh, series of three lectures that I gave at the invitation of the of the library here, the regional library in Russia and Bulgaria about ancient astrology that, that was in 2014, eight years ago. And what I would like to, uh, uh, to, to make clear is that what I mean by astrology. By astrology, I mean ancient astrology. I mean classical astrology. I mean, I don't mean modern astrology. Modern astrology has no foundation whatsoever. It doesn't follow any strict rules and it's a hundred years old. Ancient astrology, classical astrology is has over 2000 years of documented history. It's based on the on the on the teachings primarily of Plato, Aristotle, Neoplatonism, Hermeticism and Ka Kabbalah. Okay? We have to be very very clear about this because I speak about concrete uh, delineations, concrete predictions. I don't speak about psychology. I don't speak about uh, uh, human design or, or uh, some mixture of, of mythology or uh, karma or beliefs about collective evolution and other external filters. No, no, no. What I'm speaking about is, so this type of astrology that they attack, sun sign columns, other nonsense, that they attacked with the Barnum effect, look up the Barnum effect, that is when they, they did this series of experiments where they gave the same type of delineation, psychological delineation to many people, and they, what was, I believe the result was, they, they repeated, they replicated the experiment many times, the result was that I think 80% of them uh, said that it describes them, it matches their personality. But it was the same text. Again, it's impossible with ancient astrology because we speak with specifics. I repeat, 
if the Lord of the Third afflicts the Lord of the Second, you will lose money because of siblings, because of travel, because etc. And depending on the planet, the, the way you will lose the money will also be clear. And when this gets activated, it will happen in a specific year, in a specific month even, etc. I'm talking about such specifics. You will make money through friends. You will lose money through travels. It's The cause of this will be that. I'm speaking about such a type of astrology, okay? Not that that has never been, that has never been uh, uh, tested and examined. Very, we have to be very clear about this, okay? Uh, or even Indian astrology, if you will. I, again, I have tremendous respect for the Indian tradition. I, I believe I've written about this, that in 2013, uh, there was a case that reached all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court uh, of India declared that astrology is a, is a science that, that, that it's been used for 4,000 years in India. Again, uh, by astrology, it, it, they, they did not specify NATO, etc., because NATO astrology is 2,000 years old, but it doesn't matter. The point is, it's a very ancient tradition. And... Uh, so this is the type of, uh, of astrology that I mean it also. Let me uh, also explain that uh, in the late medieval ages, astrology, again, this is from Benson Bobrick's book, uh, The Fated Sky, astrology was included in the curriculums of a number of universities and was considered an irreplaceable part of the training of any doctor in diagnosing and treating illnesses. Chairs of astrology, there were chairs of astrology in the universities of Paris, Padua, Milano, Bologna. Bologna is the first university in Europe. Florence, Vienna and Oxford. Folks, again, this same traditional, classical, ancient astrology. This type of knowledge that is eternal, that does not change. Uh, speaking of this also, let's, uh, let, me define, uh, let me define astrology so that we are clear. And then I'll move on to the science part and why. So, again, according to the to the teachings of Plato, uh, Aristotle, and others, Neoplatonism, the universe is alive. It's breathing. It's filled with with uh, with meaning and with the divine plan. So, again, without the divine, without the spiritual worlds, without the higher worlds, not not just not this inferior physical world, astrology loses its its fundament, its its underpinnings. So, uh, without this, and this does, is not present in science, it was thrown away long ago in science. Astrology can, can has no footing. It's, it, 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 it's nonsensical. It, it, of course, that the, sci the, the scientists will mock it. It's, it's, it makes no sense. They want to test it with, you know, with instruments. They want to measure the radiation of the planets. <laughs> Talking about missing the point. Uh, so, uh, what, what, what does astrology mean? Where, where it comes from? What's the etymology? Where well, astrology comes from? Astro, astro, which means a star, and logos. Again, this logos, it's, it's a different, uh, it's a difficult um, uh, ancient Greek word that can, that means several things. Uh, eternal truths, the, 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 the plan of the, of the, of the ultimate creative force, etc. So, it's, uh, uh, it means, uh, uh, the words also, for example, that it, this this word is in the Bible. At the beginning, it was the word. It the the, the, the original is logos. It may, again look up logos. It has many meanings. So the point is astrologos, astrologia in Greek and in Bulgarian. Astrologia we say in Bulgarian because Greece is a neighboring country to Bulgaria. Astrologia. In other words, astrology uh, reveals. Uh, uh, astrology shows the revealing of this logos, of this speech, of this being. Astrology does this through the planets and the stars. So this is what we are studying. We are not studying, the, we are not studying the physical planets, okay? Because the physical planets are uh, the physical. The physical planets are manifestations of 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 of. of uh, of, of other beings, of other spirits. That's why the, the, the planets were... Uh, uh, in, the, in the Indian tradition, they count them as alive. Of course, they're alive. Uh, so, it, it's... Uh, we don't... That's why in the ancient world, astrologers were very um, uh, mindful. They did not say Venus. They did not say Mars. They say they said the star of Venus or the star, the star of Aphrodite in, in ancient astrology, in Hellenistic astrology, the star of Mars, okay? Uh, 
because they wanted to make sure that people understood that we're not talking about the actual physical planets, the actual physical sky necessarily. We're talking about again a higher order. Uh, so in this in this respect, astronomy is uh, again astronomy is a physical science and nothing more. That's it. Let's again we have to uh, uh, be clear in this in this distinction. Uh, so uh, let's let's get uh, let's. Uh, Uh, let's get to it. Uh, one of the best uh, articles on the subject is by American astrologer uh, Char Charles Albert, Charlie Albert. He's he's a traditional astrologer. My respect for that. He's uh, and I'm, what I mean is his his mind, his his head is in the right place. He has studied a lot of philosophy. He knows he knows where the uh, where things go, where things went wrong. He, he he's he's very influenced by Benjamin Dykes, who is a student of Robert Zoller. So am I. And again, well, he's being a traditionalist. Again, it's um, it gives you this objective, uh, uh, objective thinking, and uh, you know you're not uh, your mind is not cluttered by these external filters. Again, uh, psychology, beliefs about collective evolution, karma progressive politics, what have you, so many filters that, you know, social equality and gender stuff and so, you know, there are so many. So anyhow, uh, I will link uh, these are uh, his articles. Uh, this is the first one, astrology, that astrology is not a science, and the second one. Uh, the, the font here is very small, I would, I would rather I would rather read from my, um, again, I have abbreviated, I've underlined what uh, the, the most salient points and I will I will show them. So first, he are, so he, for, first he gives this uh, this very good quote by uh, Werner Heisenberg, which is a 20th century German theoretical physicist. Not only is the universe stranger than we think, it's stranger than we can think. It's much weirder that we can uh, comprehend, in other words. And again, he uh, he argues uh, very convincingly. In fact, I can't. Uh, you, when you when you read, he 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 puts out his argument so well that. Uh, it's you know uh, I, I'm not sure anyone can refute this really it's it's it's, it's uh, uh, so again he says the current scientific model does not include all of human experience and some of the most uh, important dimensions are left out absolutely and I will tell you which ones uh, this uh, there was an American astrologer by the name of Kelly Lee Phipps unfortunately he died in his early 40s but he uh, he popularized astrology a lot. He did a lot of work. Such a nice guy, Sagittarius ascendant. He, you can look him up. He has uh, some videos, and he um, he sponsored and created a, a documentary called Return of the Magi. Again, this three this legend about the birth of uh, so-called Jesus and Christianity, etc. And uh, the point is, is that is that in he, in this uh, movie, Return of the Magi, in this documentary, he interviewed various astrologers, as some of them are given here. And one of these astrologers is Robert Hand, very famous American uh, author, astrologer, lecturer, etc. And they explained that. Let me, because I want to make sure I quote exactly uh, what uh, what modern science threw out. Oh, sorry, what, what early science threw out. So, uh, second paragraph. So, apart from this, uh, cutting out and throwing out key parts of the teachings of Aristotle and Plato within the framework of, of science, uh, uh, concepts such as intention, will, consciousness, and life have no place. Again, in science, there is no place for intention, will, consciousness, and life. Everything's dead. Everything's dead. There is no. There is nothing else aside from the physical world. <laughs> you know, it's you know, it's 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 absolutely amazing how such nonsense continues to continues to be believed and um, and uh, you know uh, uh, continues to you know to influence people. Why? Because first of all. Uh, I don't know whether you are aware of this, but actually, because scientists they have to uh, they they have this uh, they like to think and like to project this air of superiority as if they have uh, the monopoly on truth. 
Well, nothing could be further from the truth. Why? Because let's examine what we know. Let's examine what we know as humans. What we know is that uh, with our human senses, we can perceive 0.004 or 0.005 of the of the frequency span of, of the frequency range of the universe again 0.005 this is that that's the first part the second part is with technology according to again this according to modern science with the most advanced techno with the most advanced technologies we can see five percent of the universe physical universe obviously five percent folks five percent what's the other 95 percent well they call it black matter that's a one way of saying we, we don't know. They don't know. Of course, they will never say we don't know because they will seem powerless. They will they would lose. They could lose, uh, you know, um, face. They you know they will they will theorize. They will organize conferences. You know they will simulate activity, etc., etc. Uh, but anyhow, uh, let's uh, let's not focus again. Um, let's 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 state the facts. Uh, I don't know whether you are aware of it, but there is a, a very famous institute. In the United States, in Virginia, called the Monroe Institute. This institute was founded. Uh, this institute was founded in the 1970s by an uh, American businessman. I repeat, he was a businessman, but he started having uh, spontaneous out-of-body experiences. Robert Monroe was extremely technical. Uh, we have his chart also, and he uh, conducted extremely thorough experiments with first of all with himself in controlled conditions in laboratory conditions then with thousands of people i repeat thousands of people over decades and they proved beyond any point whatsoever the non-physical reality is real the hundreds and hundreds of people had the same experiences they they, uh, they uh, described uh, the same uh, the same um, uh, he mapped the astral plane to, for those that are interested in this, he mapped the astral plane. Uh, th th he was the first one to, to map this uh, non-physical reality in detail. And he, uh, what is more, speaking of, uh, of science and hardcore facts, the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States, trained some of the, some of its employees in the Monroe Institute. And what did it? What did they, What did the agency train them to do? It trained them to uh, into remote viewing. Which is uh, an ability that, that you can that allows you the that allows you to to observe uh, almost anything within uh, well, it's mostly within physical reality without people leaving their bodies. But again, these are known facts that you will not you will not hear discussed in universities or, or mainstream media. But you can find them, for example. Uh, other people speak about this. It's also on the website of the CIA, etc. They have reports that, that they trained people at the Moral Institute. The way they, uh, the, uh, the reason they trained them, uh, at least the official one, was to spy on Russian satellites or to use as counterintelligence because the Russians were very, very involved in uh, psychic research as well. Again, these these are uh, this no, this uh, this is public knowledge and yet, and yet it's not recognized. Why are we not being this? Why why are we? Not being, uh, uh, not being told this in, in, in schools or universities, or at least mentioned this. I mean, why don't we know about this? I mean, I know this because I've read his books, his three books, etc., uh, etc. Et so uh, again, with, by, by when we when we say science, we have to uh, get, let's get back to the uh, to the text that it's it's a, a very limited. Uh, the model is, is the model does not include all of the human experiences. Some of the most important dimensions are left out. So as he says, astrology works, but it does not work the same way that science does. It's pointing at a different kind of order that's bigger, weirder, stranger. Uh, uh, also, uh, he mentions here uh, Robert Hand and also uh, Dennis Elwell, which is another astrologer in, in his book, that uh, they make this argument that uh, astrology works, so it must be a science. Uh, I have also fallen prey to such thinking before. In other words, it works so, but actually, mo as he says, modern scientists do not recognize the validity of astrology as a science. So if we want astrology to be recognized, we have to redefine the word science to make it include astrology. So uh, we have to redefine. Uh, so uh, 
also another pernicious belief is that uh, nowadays again these modern beliefs uh, we have this assumption as he explains that if if something is scientific then it must be true it must be accurate and if it's not it must be false so we have this again no middle ground for no there is no gray color there, there are no other colors it's just black or white again it, this is not this does not correspond to reality so uh, it as he says I think it, this is the same assumption that drives many astrologers to conclude that we must defend it as a science otherwise our astrology you know can can fall apart can be mocked can be you know uh, isolated etc uh, again this this belief that if astrology is not a science then it must be superstition either or or and if astrology isn't a science then you know better than a fortune teller or a tarot card reader and as he says he, he himself practices tarot and the Lenormand which again this Lenormand it's it's wrong to say Lenormand it's game of hope uh, but anyhow I also I have written articles I'm, I also practice tarot and Lenormand though not, not as often as I used to but again there are methods of divination which are uh, um, uh, extremely valid and again if you practice them with a cool head and if you follow the rules you can make specific predictions as well of course you can use them for uh, for things that uh, you can use them for dreams or for meditations or for, for what have you or to get the uh, the meaning of a certain experience what was the point of a given experience for, for many many things uh, but I have a detailed article on my website about uh, about Lenormand and ancient astrology and in fact that Lenormand is again traditional Lenormand it's uh, it has a lot of common with the way they read the uh, uh, the grand tableau with all the 36 cards a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of common again they have the topical approach they have uh, yeah but let's not let me not dwell on it so again he says uh, that he disagrees with it because fortune tellers etc and he himself reads cards and he has seen that they work of course they work they've been used for thousands of years I mean coffee grounds etc etc uh, in fact the game of hope the Lenormand it comes from coffee grounds as Anthony Lewis uh, has has discovered with others so anyhow the point is is that science is not the only standard for what is true and what's not what it's what this says is about that science is basically like a religion and uh, it reminds me something that uh, if uh, this is a this is a very good principle to, to test out just remember this this is important whenever you see uh, supposed supposed enemies unite against something then this something is either really dangerous in other words it's to be avoided or it is something really powerful that needs to be investigated what I mean by this is uh, astrology and uh, sorry uh, science and religion are supposed enemies but just supposed and yet they unify they unite and attack astrology not just astrology they would attack uh, homeopathy they would attack acupuncture they would attack uh, crystal healing they would attack many many alternative in brackets uh, 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 fields so again re remember this this principle uh, so as, as he says as Charlie says uh, the belief that if we don't view astrology as science then we are plunged back into the ignorance of su and superstition of the pre-scientific medieval ages in other words if if astrology if if we ignore science if you know if we don't take science as the ultimate you know arbiter of truth or is the arbiter the, you know the ultimate uh, the most uh, you know influential uh, uh, think of, of our time then you know we risk you know losing our footing you know we, we can be plunged back into the medieval ages into the pre-scientific in, in brackets well this is where astrology <laughs> this is where all these people worked and, and you know and, 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 and contributed etc all these great men how many of the current people will, will, will make it will make it to history you know what have they achieved what they, what they what have they contributed you know so uh uh, this points to an aspect of arrogance to the modern scientific view that uh, the underlying assumption that anything pri prior to the age of science is a worthless superstition and science has a monopoly on truth again uh, this is uh, this is really pernicious and this is anti-scientific because science means uh, this is what science this is what science means okay what the what what the Rosencrucers like uh, like to say is, as Robert Zola says summa scientia nihil scire the height of science is to know nothing 
again what, what, it, what, what this means is science will, will reach its maximum when it when it approaches things from from the cup being empty so to say from knowing nothing from with a clear mind no preconceptions no biases how many scientists can do that today that are in a leading position to influence others of course there are so many thousands of, 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 of genuine and, and you know uh, open-minded scientists I'm not talking about them uh, okay so uh, as Charlie says science is a worldview and the tool and nothing more it has its usefulness but it also it has its limitations and astrology deals with matters of significance of value of meaning science and the scientific method is value free by definition in other words it de it's devoid of value therefore by definition astrology is not a science of course how can it be a science by this by this modern term it cannot and uh, as charlie says astrology is all about perceiving a pattern that gives form and sense and meaning to a person's life this is not once what science is trying to accomplish absolutely absolutely astrology is all about pattern recognition not just i mean i have uh, some of my uh, of chinese astrologers that i'm very influenced by they also say this you have to learn patterns we we in chinese astrology we uh, we give specific names to chart to charts husband hurting chart strong self with a lot of wealth weak self with uh, with uh, or strong self with little wealth or weak self with a lot of wealth we classify charts we classify charts greed for wealth harming resources we classify charts we know what this means and uh, as he says astrology techniques are not simple repeatable and verifiable in the same way as is a scientific experiment when it comes to boiling water it will boil around 220 fahrenheit which is 100 celsius 100 degrees celsius it's predictable it, it can be replicated anytime and with astrology he says if you have 10 astrology charts with with mars in case on some given placement it it will play out it will play out in different ways uh fair enough although i will say that uh, you can't treat them in isolation because this placement will be the chart will be different every horoscope is unique it's uh, the same horoscope it's possible to be repeated after one cosmic year which is almost uh, uh, 26,000 years so uh, yeah and he also says something that uh, I, I disagree with that these people this this Jeffrey Cornelius they have this uh, or they're pushing this opinion that astrology is divination no it's not astrology uh, I'm talking about but he, he comes from the horary branch that's okay where we ask a specific question which is much which is again divination it, it does not use the natal chart whereas the natal branch Sorry, but this is not valid for the NATO branch. The astrology is not contextual. Not, I mean, not to the degree that it is contextual in the in the horror branch, in the questions branch. So uh, again, with the NATO branch, uh, he says science is objective, detached, starting apart. Astrology is not. I disagree here. Uh, again, I've said and I've said this publicly, and I will say it again. Uh, the only way the way i see it the only way for astrology to be that can be proven in in a laboratory in other words in this the objective detached way is through rectification and the reason is because with rectification we can uh we can uh we can have an experiment that's absolutely uh controlled and can be replicated in other words we can have replication is the procedure whereby we determine the correct hour and minute of uh, uh, when someone was born so uh, it is some of the things it is i specialize in this i also teach rectification i am the only astrologer in the western world that actually teaches 24 hour rectification which is rectification without a time of birth and again i've said this publicly i will say it again i am willing not just to uh to conduct such an experiment i am willing to bet money that i will uh, that i will be successful so uh, this is this is the extent which i'm so certain of of uh, of of, uh, of my abilities to do rectification whereas with the other types of astrology with uh, with the predictions with the it's it's uh, they can they can find a way to uh, they can find a way to uh, you know to as benjamin dykes has also discussed when you start when you start describing things about the ninth house where be it foreigners or uh, uh or or people of knowledge or, or or church people or they will they will find because we have several meanings for the house they will find a way but when you present the end result of with rectification let's say the birth certificate shows 
518. When you show 5, 515, 520 or something close or even 518, they cannot deny this. They cannot deny this and you will have beaten odds of, again, depending on whether you rectify to the minute or, 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 or within a few minutes, you will have beaten odds one in a few hundred or one in one thousand. With one chart, imagine rectifying more. In my course, I have rectified 10 without a time of birth. Actually, one of them is with the dirty, uh, dirty data, uh, Paganini. And uh, okay, so the point is, is that um, we can prove astrology, we can prove astrology, but this doesn't mean, I mean, we can prove that astrology works, but this doesn't mean, even in, in their terms, but this doesn't mean that they will recognize it. I mean, it's not as simple as that. What I, what I mean by this is, uh, they had, uh, in the United States, they had, uh, uh, they had a college, Kepler College, uh, in I believe in Seattle in the state of Washington and this college existed for about 10-12 years I've, if memory serves and the point is they received credits they were accredited they were recognized however even though there are 300 or something or 250 universities I, I believe in the United States they could not let it go those so-called scientists. The, there was only one college that, that taught astrology. No, it was called Kepler, after Johannes Kepler, the same, again, great astrologer and astronomer, 17th century, here he is. No, they could not let it go. They could not let it go. So, there was sabotage, there was, again, they were attacked at Kepler College, what have you, and they lost, uh, they, 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 they were no longer accredited. That was years ago. I don't know what's, what be happening with the college. I haven't been following, but... Uh, so again, so even if you um, people, the people teaching at college had PhDs, they were uh, meeting the criteria, etc., etc. Doesn't matter. Someone, someone has a vested interest in this knowledge not being recognized, not just astrology. Uh, so, <coughs> uh, sorry, as uh, Charlie says, with the scientific view and with scientific advancement and improvements, something was gained with the advent of the scientific worldview. But maybe, just maybe, something was also lost. Uh, absolutely and speaking of scientists let me say that I am I will be always grateful to scientists actually because uh, it's because of scientists that we uh, f what, I, what I mentioned in the video about a brief history of ancient astrology it, if, if it wasn't for Hipsico of the 2nd century uh, uh, BCE of, before the common era who wrote this, uh, his work on ascensions, uh, a Greek astronomer and mathematician in Alexandria in Egypt. Astrologers until that time could not calculate the houses, uh, the, the degree of the ascendant, etc. It was because of him. So astrology, there, was, uh, there were astrological traditions in the Mesopotamia, uh, Mesopotamian area, in Egypt, in India, etc. But it was not astrology as we use it today because there were no, again, no houses, no, uh, etc. And uh, there were also, the apparatus had not been fully developed. But the point is, we have this scientist to, ta to, ta to thank. We also have, speaking of, of uh, uh, you know, ancient astrology, we have, uh, uh, there was this movement in the uh, late 19th century by European scientists. Uh, one of them is Bushley Clark, uh, I believe French, another is uh, Cumont, Belgium, I believe. The uh, uh, late 19th, early 20th century, they started uh, making critical editions of, of the ancient works, of the ancient astrological works. They did tremendous work that required many, many years. Of course, they were paid by the public, but let me also say that those scientists, they did not uh, uh, do this. Uh, for the benefit of astrology, of course not. It was the last thing on their mind. The, the reason they actually did it, and again, this is public knowledge. Also, Chris Brennan discusses it uh, in, in his book, and not just Chris Brennan, many others, and Robert Zoller, and Robert Schmidt, etc. Uh, and the reason they did it was because they wanted to study the ancient people, the ancient people's uh, customs, beliefs, actions, philosophies, etc. That's why they did it, as a way to, uh, again, as a way to learn more about ancient people. So, again, uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, we have to be grateful. And then also came Otto Neugebauer and David Pingri, although they did some, they, they committed some errors, uh, that they, they contributed a lot. Uh, uh, okay, so, uh, 
As Charlie says, science leaves out the most important and meaningful aspects of human experience. Absolutely. Again, we have to ask, are we that desperate for astrology to be uh, a science and, and then what? And to leave the most important and meaningful aspects of its own, uh, you know, underpinnings. That, that, that cannot happen. We cannot allow it, and nor is it possible actually to do this because what are we going to speak about the physical world? You know, <laughs> it's, I mean, by the physical world, I mean, what are we going to speak about the physical planets or, 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 or uh, you know, uh, we, again, without the higher worlds, I mean, without the higher sense, the higher meanings, I mean, it's, again, without God, without the Creator, uh, without the higher purpose, it, 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 again, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a dismal situation, it would be a dismal reality. Uh, okay, and then I would like also, Charlie uh, wrote a, another article next year. This is the nitty-gritty that I wanted to discuss, but I, I want to make sure I give you... Uh, a, you have a, 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 a more uh, balanced and, and um, a comprehensive view of, of, uh, of what I'm trying to, uh, to convey here. So again, he says, astrology is not a science as we currently understand the word science. This is key, folks. Again, as I said, I absolutely agree with him. Uh, and you will see why now. Because as he says, many people don't realize but the meaning of the word science has changed drastically over the past 200 years. And uh, I'm skipping this here. And uh, he speaks about, the, uh, he mentions the American Dictionary of the English Language by Noah Webster. The Webster Dictionary, very famous, of course. Uh, two, uh, um, uh, two editions, 1828 and 1913, available online. Here it is. Uh, when you when you uh, when you uh, write in the search engine Webster 1913 there it is you write science or whatever uh, uh, term you want and here it is uh, and pay attention here please extremely important this is why I, I underlined it looking through the 1828 dictionary and then comparing a modern dictionary is like going from a five-star gourmet restaurant to a McDonald McDonald's drive-thru that is a reasonable metaphor. Language in the older dictionary is so more varied, spicy, and flavorful. And language in the new dictionary is stripped down and flavorless. Absolutely. Absolutely. This has been a, this deliberate attempt to dump, to dump people down. Look at education. Uh, when our language is stripped down, our thought is stripped down, and our experience is impoverished. In the modern world, we live in a fast food reality. So true, so true. Again, I'm doing this, I'm again from Bulgaria, a small country in Europe. You can't imagine how much life has changed over the, over the past decades compared to, uh, uh, there, there is this, again, this, uh, this uh, pressure to Americanize and to globalize culture so that they abandon what they have, their, their, their unique contributions, their, cult, their, their heritages, etc. And again, this f throwing so many foreign words into the languages, etc., etc. Fortunately, some countries such as France they protect their language, but they're not. They're very few. Uh, next, let's. There are three definitions. Again, this is from. I, I will be reading from this one because it's uh, it's easy on GIS. So I can enlarge it here. Uh, but there it is again. I will I will uh, give the, the link in the description as you see. It's not. I'm not making anything up, of course. So first definition of science: knowledge of principles and causes ascertained truth of facts again the word principle means beginning starting point basis that from which everything else follows to know the principle of something is to know its source extremely important the word cause also has greatly changed and reduced in meaning over the years in modern scientific sense of the term cause is always something physical that can be measured again absolutely uh, Robert Schmidt has spoken about this in detail uh, also Robert Hand about the four causes of Aristotle Modern science has kept only the efficient cause, meaning the physical cause and effect chain of events. Cause in the traditional sense here has connotations of Aristotle's formal cause, that which gives shape, a form, and the final cause, its end or purpose. Modern science has no place for purpose or meaning, and without that dimension, astrology is meaningless. Absolutely. And mind you, what we are discussing here is, it's not just philosophy, folks. This philosophy is embedded in ancient astrology again with the with the uh, again uh, I, I robert hand robert schmidt they have spoken about this with the with the final cause and the uh, 
with having a planet in a house versus the ruler of a house. Again, this philosophy can be applied directly to, to chart delineation in ancient astrology. Uh, so, uh, another uh, here, if we conceive God's light, God, sorry, God's sight or science before the creation to be extended to all and every part of the world, think everything as it is. And as Charlie says, just using God and science in the same sentence tells you we are living in a different world here. Absolutely. When have, when have you seen God and science in, in a single sentence, folks? Wherever you live, please leave a comment. Leave a comment. Tell me where... Of course, you, you haven't. You haven't because it has been systematically, uh, uh, you know, suppressed, deleted, uh, etc. Uh, uh, next, uh, second, uh, second definition, he has underlined comprehensive, profound or philosophical knowledge. Having in point of form the character of logical perfection and in point of matter the character of real truth. Uh, now definition number three. Pay attention. Especially such knowledge when it relates to the physical world and its phenomena, the nature, constitution and forces of matter, the qualities and functions of living tissues, etc. Also called natural science and physical science. Again, this Charlie says this third definition is really the only one left in the modern dictionary. In current usage, science starts and ends with measurable physical phenomena. If it can be measured in a lab, it can be calculated, it can, it can be exactly replicated in controlled circumstances, and it, and it has no dimension of meaning, awareness, consciousness, or value. Again, folks, extremely, extremely important concept. Again, check it out for yourselves. Of course, there is the third, there is the third uh, definition, such knowledge, physical world, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, a little bit later in this paragraph, talking about the different dimensions of science. Science is applied to pure, applied science is a knowledge of facts, events or phenomena is explained, accounted for, or produced by means of powers, causes or laws. Pure science is the knowledge of these powers, causes or laws considered apart or as pure form of applications. As he says, as far as I can tell, we have lost half of the meaning in the modern world. Science and applied science are now effectively syn synonyms. What Webster calls pure science has dropped out of our usage. Again, dumbing down, dumbing down, stripping, stripping uh, uh, meanings. Uh, in a more distinctive sense, science embraces those branches of knowledge of which the subject matter is either ultimate principles or facts as explained by principles or laws thus arranged in natural order. Okay. Therefore, science and art may be said to be investigations of truth, but one, science inquires for the sake of knowledge, the other, art for the sake of production, and hence science is more concerned with the higher truths, art with the lower, and science never is engaged as artist in productive application. Again, as, as Charlie says here, in this paragraph, the meanings of science and art are very nearly reversed from their usage today. The science of ultimate principles is gone. The other science, for the sake of production, is really all that's left today. The whole concept of science being more concerned with the higher truths is pretty much unthinkable. Again, original source. There it is. Subject matter, ultimate principles, etc. Uh, etc. Et it's uh, Higher truths, where is this in science? Gone, stripped away. Uh, as, as, as Charlie says, this is not just, uh, there, there, are no, there are no higher truths in modern science, and there is no higher world than our material world of phenomena to support such a stance. Without that higher world, astrology is meaningless superstition. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, also, uh, um, uh, he also says this is not just a change in language but uh, an impoverishment of our experience because we have lost the meaning of some concepts used to describe it. I think it's very important to, that we become aware of just how impoverished much of our modern use of language is and how it limits the possibilities of thinking. With the modern reduced meaning of the term, the divine science of astrology turns into an irrational superstitious oddity that has the connotations of words like supernatural and psychic. Astrology lies, lies outside the modern scientific rules of what is real. And as he ends, uh, 
uh, he has seen, I've seen some very fine modern astrologers fall into this linguistic trap. In their eagerness to defend astrology as a science, in the modern reductionist sense of the term, they have rushed to emphasize how it's important to distinguish astrology from mere fortune telling of, of psychic arts. Because of the lack of awareness of the changing meaning of, uh, of science, I think we are using science in a too narrow sense here. And so we are discounting or missing the ways in which the practice of astrology has real affinity with psychic arts like tarot reading. Absolutely. That's why, again, astrology was uh, is, is referred as the golden key in occult predictive sciences and tarot is referred to as the silver key in occult predictive sciences. Uh, uh, again, astrology can't exist in a linguistic and philosophical vacuum with no system of thought to support it. We need, we need a way of thinking about astrology that makes sense of it and that gives it a coherent philosophical underpinning. And that's the purpose of this post that he says. And he says, uh, he closes, I now would say that I agree that astrology is indeed a science, but I'm using the term in a way much closer to what Thomas Taylor and the Platonist tradition is pointing to the spiritual principles, order and structure that underlies and upholds our existence in space and time. Astrology as a science may indeed have a physical dimension, but more importantly, it has a spiritual and philosophical underpinning. Uh, if we are to be effective astrologers and to argue our case way, we, we, need, we need to think clearly, we need to be clear about the meaning of the words we use, and when we are using words like science outside of the usual connotations of the term in common discourse, we need to be very clear and explicit about that. Absolutely. We are not just re recovering astrology, we are also recovering a, a richer worldview and context within which astrology makes sense, and also recovering a divine context for our minds and our reality. So true. A tremendous article. Uh, thank you, Charlie. I, would, I, I have to write him to, uh, to really thank him and to uh, also let him know that I used some of his, uh, a, lo a lot of his, uh, uh, his thought on, thoughts on the matter. Uh, again, here is uh, his website. Uh, he uh, he also has a he also has a book about uh, um, about predictive astrology about uh, the cycle of the year the Perso Arabic uh, uh, system of, of predictions that includes five six uh, techniques together not just the solar return chart as modern astrology uses. Uh, okay, uh, let's see what else. Uh, I'd like to show you this. Uh, Let's move that, sorry. Uh, this is very short, but uh, this website no longer exists, unfortunately. Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, it's interesting. Again, this this one says this. He says that, as in the Bible, astrology teaches that the soul enters in the body of the newborn at, at his first breath. Absolutely, we have ancient astrologers such as um, Porphyry, 4th century, Rhetoria, 6th century, that say this explicitly, and also others as well. And also again in the Bible, the, the Genesis quote. Uh, about And the, the point here is that at the, the birth moment, the first breath, the newborn is penetrated by the planetary conditions existing at, at the birth, at the location. It is being conditioning the coding of the genes of, of the DNA. Uh, sure, but it's not just the DNA because DNA is, uh, you know, it's it's the spirit. The spirit is involved. It's it's a combination of the spirit and the body. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's that's interesting how he closes. Uh, he says, in the present day, science is henceforth capable to clone a human. That is to create a living being having the same physical features, precisely that. A normally conceived human, same size, same weight, same face, same color of skin, uh, hair, same eyes, etc. However, the birth date of the clone will be different. Therefore, his horoscope will be different. Therefore, his well, he uses karma. Therefore, his karma will be different. Therefore, his education will be different. Therefore, his character will be different. Therefore, his behavior in life will be different. All of this, even though the, their physics, uh, the, uh, he means their, their appearances uh, are identical. An Einstein's clothing cannot give a second Einstein. I would say Tesla, not Einstein, but anyhow, Einstein will do. Uh, so yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a nice uh, that's a nice addition. Uh, again, this this website doesn't let me try again, but uh, I tried opening it. Page not found. Uh, it's good I saved the article. Uh, okay, let me close this. Uh, 
let's see uh, what else uh, well uh, uh, let me show you something about first of all uh, this the antikythera mechanism uh, it was found it was it was found it was found in Greece in 1901 in the early 20th century at the bottom of the sea and modern science however rarely mentions what this mechanism was used for this is because it was used for astrological purposes calculation of birth charts and planetary positions so this antiquitarian mechanism is, is like the, the, the ancient computer so this means that the most complex device of the ancient world was used for the purposes of what many of modern science of modern scientists being materialists of, of what many consider as superstition or pseudoscience <laughs> you know this uh, 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 this uh, uh, this denial of theirs is proof of uh, of their um, uh, of their uh, unadmitted uh, scientific defeat they would not admit that they've been scientifically defeated uh, so uh, Uh, let's see uh, let me also show you something uh, speaking uh, speaking of uh, of science uh, with you see how how they uh, how they uh, they change things they change things by uh, by the definitions not just by the definitions but but by changing the definition of a science they 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 they, uh, they, they dealt a deadly blow uh, but uh, uh, each of us I mean I presume uh, has I mean look what's been happening in the last two years two years and a half actually again if is astrology a science well have we been in a pandemic in the past two years and a half yes or no again the answer lies in what a pandemic is again common knowledge you can always look it up actually what turns out is that in 2009 the private i repeat the private organization known as the world health organization change the definition of pandemic and henceforth for the past for the last two and a half years we've been in a pandemic with the changed definition again for the past almost two years have we had uh, vaccines or have we have we had some uh, some uh, some uh, how shall I call them injections jabs some uh some uh uh whatever you want to call them that are not vaccines again the world health organization this private organization changed the definition of a vaccine public information look it up so again if those that are in a position to, to or th that have this power so to say to change definitions can wreak tremendous havoc you know it's uh you know who is to say that did someone some some days uh, i mean look look at uh, look at look at the situation with the genders i mean with with this created artificial genders and uh, i don't know 20 genders 30 something genders you know that uh, i mean who who is to say that they can change the definition of a human they can change the definition of food they can change the uh, this is not just again uh, this is very pernicious and also if uh, uh, taking this to the extreme as they have in the, as, as they have in the United States uh, unfortunately such a great country such great people uh, they uh, the NSTA which is the National Science Teaching Association banned the words mother father uh, man and woman in other words they will this they will start discouraging these words when teaching when teaching children again look it up nsta bans again look it up folks end of may i believe end of may 2022 what's going on here if they can you know this this, this is unprecedented so uh, uh 
uh, again, it, uh, whether uh, whether astrology <laughs> is recognized or not, I mean, we have uh, much bigger fish to fry, so to say, but the point is to illustrate what uh, 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 you know what havoc can be created by you know by arbitrarily changing things and unfortunately they always change for, to the detriment of people not the other way around uh, I would like to, to give you this also this example uh, uh, it's in Bulgarian but um, anyhow this is uh, about a great Bulgarian doctor called Ivo Gurgiev he um, uh, he graduated with a major uh, nuclear medicine in the United States and he started working in American hospitals and he encountered many people that are uh, th that have cancer etc and uh, long story short those he treated the cancer returned most of many cases however he, he had clients who who used traditional Chinese medicine and they said that the tumors were gone and they, they we, we used Chinese medicine again folks traditional Chinese medicine ancient astrology traditional knowledge not this modern you know innovations and watered down versions and modifications and uh, so he he started studying chinese medicine and he graduated in the united states here there there is uh, there there is and uh, and the, the author of the article says in the united states uh, the graduated specialists in chinese medicine are respected and valued by the state and everyone along with the with the other doctors uh i'm not sure that's entirely true given the big pharma but anyhow the point is they are recognized they are they are yes they are respected okay somewhat but this doctor came to bulgaria his 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 country i mean his <laughs> his uh, his fatherland and he went to the ministry of health of healthcare to have his diploma recognized his uh, chinese medicine diploma recognized and he received a, a letter saying that such a profession in Bulgaria does not exist and there is no uh, major to which he can be uh, he can be uh, included in and then the ministry of uh, uh, the ministry of science they, they ridiculed him and said that he, they cannot recognize his diplomas or this could be the ministry of education anyhow and she says that it's because of such clerks and and old legislation and attitudes that bulgaria is losing real and capable doctors and countries that give the green light to such to such doctors benefit from such patients uh heap them with with thanks and gratitude for for their restored health health that is achieved through uh through natural methods that are easy on the body so the point is again this 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 example may not be uh uh, pertinent to, you, uh, to to your country or to your case, but I'm sure you, you're seeing my point. Because of some clerks that decided that this is not included or that is not included, we cannot recognize this. This man has saved lives, folks. This man has saved lives. And he's a Bulgarian and they will not have him. They will not, you know, why don't they have a commission? Why don't they, or they are scientists supposedly, why don't they organize a commission and, and add this, you know, to the, um, uh, to the list of professions? You know, why not? again uh if this is how science acts you know uh, i'm sorry but this is uh, this is not human this is not humane you know this is not in, in the interest of the people uh so uh, uh i'd like to uh to uh, to leave you with something positive uh we should keep in mind what we're studying and what we're dealing with and uh again uh we're studying with with, with uh with ancient astrology we're studying the eternal principles of which all things come from both externally and internally as robert zoller said and taught the rules of astrology are eternal and immutable because astrology reflects the way this world functions through nature through life through death through time through the seasons etc there is the the solstices and the equinoxes and uh Again, this uh, ancient astrology and ancient wisdom teaches that the universe is a breathing, a life, and conscious. Everything is is uh, is uh, connected. Without this interconnectedness, life would, could not exist. That it, they teach us that everyone has a different role that they play according to their lot. In other words, what has according to their horoscope. That there is a higher meaning 
and there is and cannot exist such a thing as coincidence so uh, this this is why the the ancient philosophers astrologers magicians etc because in the past astrology alchemy and magic were they were sisters these three uh, sciences uh, they uh, uh, they like to uh, to uh, portray the world as this as this interconnected uh, and the cosmos this interconnected web this web of of correspondences of influences of of, 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 of vibrations whatever you want to call it of signatures without this interconnection again everything uh, it just ceases to be it, it, it loses it loses meaning it it, it you know it uh, yeah it, it, it's impossible we can't explain anything without we it cannot work and again without this we don't have this in science obviously in current science we can't include astrology without uh, redefining uh, the, the, the meaning of the word science and uh, I would like to leave you with uh, with uh, with two very good quotes uh, one quote is I wrote this article on my old blog one quote is by again Guido Bonatti the 13th century Italian astrologer he, this is translated by Benjamin Dykes again his his book is called book of astronomy but the book is about astrology because astronomy and astrology were one in the uh, in the ancient times so he says as you see because besides if astrology or astronomy were not art or science that renowned concept that's proclaimed universally by all that there are seven liberal arts would now be destroyed they would either be six or none at all because if astronomy were not an art or science the others would not would not be either and this would be unsuitable and extremely dreadful likewise likewise because astronomy or astrology may, may be said to be the fourth part of the quadrivia of the uh, quadri quadrivium and if there is no astronomy there is no uh, quadrivium because with with the because with an integral integral part having been destroyed the whole is destroyed which would be in, unsuitable to the highest degree likewise if there is not quadrivium then there is then then there is neither mathematics nor theory since mathematics is by philosophic witness the third part of theory if there is no theory there is no philosophy which is impudent troublesome and absurd therefore astronomy is by necessity a science inasmuch as whoever destroys astronomy destroys knowledge just as he who destroys the first principle destroys wisdom as Aristotle witnesses in his second, second book of metaphysics. Again, by first principle, we are talking about the spiritual nature of the world. Look up Plato, look up Aristotle, but Plato especially in the Neopl Neoplatonists. Against such people, against such men who wish to destroy the sciences, one must not dispute because they are worse than the beasts. Folks, such strong words that, uh, you know, uh, I have nothing to add. Uh, impressive. B B Bonatti is uh, very, uh, very sharp in his uh, in his words, in his tongue. Uh, and the last quote is by, uh, interestingly, by another Italian of the Middle Ages, uh, Dante Alighieri, in his Convivio. Again, uh, Dante uh, uh, Dante describes uh, rather a science, a planet to the each of the seven seven liberal arts. Obviously, there are seven because there are seven planets, which is why we have seven days in a week. We have five working days. And two and uh, and two free days, which are the sun and the moon, because the sun and the moon don't work. They are lights. They are not planets, etc., etc. We have seven wonders of the ancient world, etc. And he says that he compares astrology to the sphere of Saturn because Saturn is the outermost planet. It's the highest planet. And he says that uh, furthermore, uh, uh, furthermore, ast astrology is far above the other sciences. Since, uh, says, since as Aristotle says at the beginning of On the Soul of Science is, is noble due to the nobility of its subject and its exactness. And this one more than those uh, mentioned above is high and noble because of its high and noble subject, the movement, the movement of the heavens. And because of its exactness which is flawless as deriving from perfect and regular principles. If any belief it is flawed, it is not due to the science, but as Ptolemy says it arises through our negligence and must be attributed to that. Again, the quadrividium is, our, this is from Latin, uh, as you see, the, 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 the quadrividium are arithmetic, music, geometry and astronomy or astrology and the three are, uh, the three are grammar, rhetoric and logic. A source, the Italian astrologer Margarita. And uh, 
so uh, this this uh, is, uh, is is what I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to to present and to share. This is my. If you resonate with it, if you like it, uh, you can. If you can subscribe or like the video, I would appreciate it. Ancient and Chinese astrology is my channel. If you'd like to, to leave a comment or a question, I'll be happy to answer. And if you'd like to share how, how you view astrology, whether it's a science and other what circumstances or not, I would also be interested in, in to hearing it. If you can also provide some sources, uh, I would appreciate it. I'm very inquisitive. I like to, uh, to improve my understanding and my knowledge. Thank you.